Hi, Homeworthy. My name is Ambrose. Welcome to our home in the English countryside. Can't wait to show you around. Come on in. You're watching Homeworthy, where we believe every home has a story. Like and subscribe for more. Hi, my name is Ambris Miller, and we are in Suffolk in the UK. Um, we are at our home um, that has origins of the 17th century. So I am originally from Birmingham, Alabama, uh, born and bred. My family, from as far back as we can trace, are from Alabama. Um, but I actually moved to the UK about 13 years ago. It was right after college. Um, I went to Davidson College in North Carolina and I started working for Bank of America um, in Charlotte, which is only about 20 minutes away from Davidson. And there was an opportunity to move to London for a project. And I remember saying to my boss at the time, uh, put me in coach, I, I wanna go to the I wanna go to London, I wanna go to the UK. Um, it was really because I had traveled abroad when I was at Davidson and we had about two weeks in London and fell in love with the art, history, culture, and I was dying to get back. So the first opportunity that presented itself with the bank at the time, uh, I jumped at it. And 13 years later, here we are. So we are in Suffolk in the UK. So we're in England. It's what in the region called East Anglia. Um, and it's a wonderful part of the countryside. Um, so we are about an hour and a half by train um, into London or from London. Um, I drive or take the train into London probably about two or three times a week. So it's pretty accessible from that perspective, but we're in a beautiful little village um, just outside of Bury St. Edmunds and I absolutely adore it. It's funny because whenever my friends from back home in Alabama come to visit or friends or family, they say, you moved 3000 miles away just to move back home. Um, and that's really because it, the village definitely has a kind of an Alabama feel to it, kind of a small town, slower pace, especially outside of London. Um, and it also means that you are able to get a bit more for your money than if you were to live in London. Our home has origins from the 17th century. Um, you, it starts from the back, uh, so about 1650 is when the original foundations were laid. Foundations, it's, it's kind of built on earth <laughs> because there weren't such things as foundations back then. Um, and it's kind of a bit higgly piggly towards the back of the house. And as you move forward to the front of the house, that's when you see slightly larger proportion rooms, um, a slightly higher ceilings. And again, that's just because as the families, as generations continued on that lived here, had more and more money, they would upgrade or effectively add on an extension towards the front. And so the most modern part of the home is the actual, the front, which is a bit of a Georgian um, exterior. I live in our home with my husband, Ben, uh, and our 18 month old little boy named Hendrix, and our two dogs, Theo and Edison. So we are in the foyer. So the way the house is built is that it runs, it has two long hallways that runs from the front to the back of the, of the house um, on the top and then the bottom as well. And then all of the rooms go off of those um, hallways, which is really nice because it means that when you open your front door, you can see all the way through the back if I don't close this divider door. Um, but this foyer, we really just want it to have a bit of a punch when you first walk in. We also want it to complement these original tiles, these Victorian tiles. But I like to say that this is kind of like the religious hallway um, uh, as we move into the foyer just because I have some of my religious paintings up. I'm obsessed with anything Italian Renaissance or anything Italian or co really continental European religious studies. So uh, that's just my background in art and art history. Um, but one of the things that we wanted to have is a focal point, and we ummed and awed about this the entire time, is having this Sputnik, this Murano Sputnik chandelier. It's probably the one thing that I had to really convince my husband on um, because of the size of it and as you can see it's, it's not the biggest space when you walk in um, certainly compared to some of the homes I've seen in America where they have 20 foot ceilings 
We don't have that there. We don't have that here rather. Um, but what I think that this does is it adds a bit of contemporary flair, but also a focus on that artisan and craftsmanship, uh, which I think is so integral um, to any, any piece. But the funny part about this is that even though it's, we, we just about got it in this space, I couldn't actually add on the bottom Murano spikes because otherwise it would touch your head as you walked by. And my husband and I are quite tall, so we didn't want to, to, to potentially bump into it and knock it down. Um, but I absolutely love this foyer. I think the, the fun part about it is this color green, which took me about two years to find. And I've painted this probably like four or five times. <laughs> <laughs> different colors of green. Um, this is actually called a uh, night vision green and I think it's perfect. I think it has the it, a very classic feel but again a, a punch and a pop of color which I think is always really nice when you first walk into a home. Uh, I think it also really uh, works nicely against the to showcase some of my favorite pieces which are two French oils. Uh, they're from the turn of the century so around 1900. French oils and we actually got this when we were on honeymoon. So my husband and I uh, were married in Tuscany and um, in order for us to get back instead of flying because we had to bring so much so much stuff down to Italy, um, we drove back and we just took a nice leisurely drive back and we went through Saint Emilion and of course I have a habit of no matter where we are type in, see where I am on Google and then type in antiques to see if there's anything nearby and there was this amazing antique shop just outside of Saint Emilion um, and this little old man who had just floor to ceiling antiques and he had these two pieces in the back. Um, they're oil on wood. They're not by the same artist but they would probably have been completed by um, almost like studies, academic studies. So probably two pupils in the same in the same uh, class. But I think they're just fantastic. They're, there's nothing grand about them. I don't think that they're they're not pretentious whatsoever. They're just studies, but I think they're so beautiful. And every time I see them, I kind of think about our honeymoon and how much fun we had. One of my other favorite pieces in the foyer, and again, I just wanted to put everything that I love really uh, a lot just in one space, right? Um, but is this, this a beautiful uh, Italian bus. Um, it's done after an 18th, 19th century um, Italian bus. This is probably early 20th century, but I think it still is, is quite beautiful. Um, and the idea is anything that has a skull in, uh, from a motif perspective is just talking about brevity of life. Um, so it's a memento mori is what the, the term is referred to, but I just think he's really fun. He's usually wearing a Santa hat during Christmas. Um, he's wearing birthday hats if there's a birthday. Um, right now he's wearing a fez that I, I don't even know where I got this from, <laughs> but I just thought it was quite fun. And then um, what I always love to use is bring a lot of different color and different stones and layer. Uh, and so these are some, some amber uh, beads that I found when I was in Istanbul. Um, but yeah, I just think he's, he's really fun. Um, another fun piece that I think is really classic and you'll see throughout the home is uh, these chinoiserie uh, blue and white ginger jars. So these are porcelain ginger jars um, that I had commissioned um, when I did a, um, an artist residency in China um, about five or six years ago, if not a bit longer than that. And I fell in love with the, the region of the capital, the porcelain capital of the world. And it's something that, again, you'll see throughout the home because I feel like it's classic, um, but also it's very fun. The artisan and the craftsmanship required is, is second to none. Um, and it's something that Relic has really kind of become known for. It's just my general obsession with bobbin furniture and blue and white ginger jars uh, alongside oil paintings. So um, there we are. I think I've stayed in the UK for so long, mainly because I love the history and the culture of it. So when I was uh, at college, so when I was at Davidson College, I studied art and art history. Um, and before that, when I was in Birmingham, I went to the Alabama School of Fine Arts majoring in art. So to be able to live in a place that had so much rich culture and just had also so many different cultures culminating in London, especially as a hub, really made it hard for me to leave.
So I work in finance, but I also founded a business called Relic Interiors uh, that's an art and antique stealing business about three years ago officially, though I've been collecting for many years before that. Um, the ethos for Relic Interiors is really to make art and antiques transparent and accessible because I really don't think that you should be limited by your budget to live with beautiful things. So the, what's really fantastic about having your own art and antiques business is it means that you can decorate your house and it's constantly changing. Um, and that's really where our home comes into its own because we're able to use uh, the various rooms, the different settings to really kind of showcase the various pieces that I offer on Relic. Um, it's all on Instagram and we have a website, but it's really fun to kind of play around with the decor of the home when I get new pieces in. So now we're in the snug. Um, the snug is a bit of a different concept um, versus the UK versus America. I would say it's most akin to like a din, um, but the idea that it's snug, it's snuggly, literally snug as a bug in a rug, <laughs> that, type of, that type of mentality. Um, and because of that is, I guess, the informal sitting room. Um, and because of that, we really want it to kind of lean into it being a bit darker, a bit moodier, um, this is the perfect winter room because when it's dark and cold outside, we have the beautiful Ingo Nook fireplace there. My husband loves doing a big fire, a roaring fire, um, and it's really nice just to have sat here, cozied up, reading a book or watching our favorite uh, program. Um, but yeah, it's probably one of my favorite rooms in the house. Um, again, I was in charge of all of the art, which was really nice. Um, but my husband, this is his claims of fame, he picked out this color, this wall color. So it's called Mission Blue. And um, we knew we wanted to go for a deeper, darker color. We were thinking about a dark green, but that, I knew that I wanted the foyer to be uh, a green. So I thought, I don't want this to look like a hunting lodge. <laughs> so, so we finally settled on the color of blue. And again, it's those, those uh, process of discovery. Um, what I think is really nice is that any of the deeper colors or bold colors really, um, they really have the opportunity to showcase artwork. Um, I am a bit partial to kind of a gold, a gold framed picture. So um, yeah, it works really well. Um, some of my favorite pieces here are, oh gosh, where do I even begin? I love this, this Celine horse head. So this is from the Pantheon. Um, this is a copy, a resin copy. Um, this was actually a limited edition done and commissioned by the British Museum. Um, it's uh, done in mid-century. So again, it has a bit of age, but obviously it's not from the Hellenic period, <laughs> but, but it's, I think it's really striking. It's unexpected. I think my husband and I both like when you walk into a room and you just find something that makes you smile or something that's like, oh, I was not expecting that. So um, I've always also loved anything to do with horses. Um, I love horse art, horse portraits. Um, two horse portraits are up here, which are some of my favorites, are by Alexander Pock. Um, he's uh, a, a European a painter um, in the turn of again turn of century, so late 1800s, early 1900s. Uh, but he did beautiful equestrian portraits, um, mainly of military um, military styling. Uh, but yeah, I just think those are really nice, and it kind of complements kind of the horse. There's a horse head thing going uh, along here. What I, I find amazing is when we first moved into the house and. We didn't have, we were living in a flat in London, so we didn't have a lot of furniture and certainly not furniture that we wanted to, to bring with us. So we spent the first year or two at auction houses, tons of auction houses around here and just in the countryside where you have these big country homes where people are moving on, people are downsizing, whatever the case may be. And it just means that you can get these beautiful uh, antique pieces for, at the time, uh, you know, pennies on the dollar, which is, or pence on the pound, depending on who you're speaking to. Uh, this is an example of that, this Georgian tall boy. I, every time I see one now, I, I seem to try to buy it because <laughs> I think they're, they're beautiful. Um, I think they're very kind of handsome pieces. Um, and you get them in all different types of conditions as well. But I think all the kind of the nicks and the, the scuffs, it just adds to it. All the patina just really kind of shows its character and shows its age, which I think is quite charming. And obviously the ginger jars, the blue and white, again, they kind of go with pretty much everything. Um, 
Another piece that I really enjoy in here is this Italian Renaissance um, piece here. Um, you probably can't see it. I, it. It's very dark. It needs to be cleaned if I'm completely honest. Um, so I would have to take it to a restorer to do that. I have an amazing restorer in London. Um, but it's effectively, uh, you see, see a central figure on the left um, and then you see animal studies. And this is again, interpret it in various different ways, but it's a, a sign of enlightenment, a moment of um, being uh, revealed to um, by the heavens or by an angel. Some people is kind of debating on which angel and which scene it's depicting, but I just think it's really nice. And because of its deep tones, it demands you to get very close to inspect it. And I think that's always really nice when you have a piece that just commands the viewer to come a little bit closer and have a share a little bit of a special moment to it. Um, Throughout the house, you'll probably notice that I have for window treatments, there are some curtains, some, <laughs> but the vast majority are tapestries just because I am obsessed with textiles. I think adding texture into a room um, through various different types of textiles is the easiest way to make a room look lived in, to make a room feel like it's, it's been collected instead of curated as such. Um, and I have a, a few of these Uzbekistan Suzanis, and I think they're just beautiful. Um, this one probably is only about 40 or 50 years old, but they were effectively marriage, su uh, marriage textiles. Um, so, and the term Suzani kind of comes from thread or million threads and the idea that, you know, the marriage will last as long as in, there are threads in, in the tapestry. That's one interpretation of it. But I just think that they're beautifully done and rich in color and they come in various palettes. Um, I particularly like these because they feel a bit more muted, um, but they add a visual interest into a room. Um, and then kind of returning back to the Inglenook fireplace. Again, this is where we normally put the Christmas tree. This is where we spend the most time as a family, uh, me, my husband, my son, and the dogs, uh, and it feels very kind of cozy. Um, and it's nice to be able to have one of my pieces when we're not using the fireplace right now, because it's in the summer. Uh, one of my favorite paintings that um, I've been able to source is a Hendrick, um, Henry Frederick Lucas Lucas um, painting. And it's, I'm obsessed with his work, mainly because he is just, it's second to none regarding equestrian portraits. Um, I think the detailing is really fantastic. This one is actually, I sourced this one for Relic, but I have one that I bought um, at auction that I don't think I could ever part with just because it's, it's really quite special um, to me. Um, but it's nice to have this on display here um, when we're not using the fireplace, but obviously when you're using a fireplace, do not put any artwork above it. <laughs> Especially not one like as old as this one because is I'm sure modern fireplaces are a little bit better insulated, but this one is not. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's this is the snug. Uh, I think it just has such wonderful character to it. I really love the exposed beams. I think that's uh, a really kind of fun and authentic um, uh, element to the room. Uh, and this is where again we spend so much time as a family. Living in a home with a history as long as ours does, it's such a privilege. Um, when my husband and I were looking at moving outside of London and buying our, our first home and buying a house, uh, we knew we wanted a period property. We knew we wanted something that had character and a bit of a soul to it. Um, and we could have never imagined we would find this house. So uh, it's called Chapel House. Um, we jokingly refer to him, the house is Chap. And we say that, you know, we just had such a good energy when we first walked in. And I know that people try to describe that, what that feels that when you know, you know, but we genuinely just said, this is it. Before we even set foot in it, actually, just from the pictures that we saw on the listing, we said, this, this was it. This was embodied everything that we thought we wanted from a family home. Um, and I think that we always say that Chap is very happy with what we're doing because we're bringing him back to his former glory. So we are now in the dining room. Um, this is probably the room that sees the most attention whenever we have friends over, which is often, uh, just because it's nice to, to have um, a big table spread um, and just have a lot of fun. <laughs> 
if I'm completely honest, when we first moved out here, it was it took us about five or six years to, to renovate the house slowly. Um, but every year we've had a nice Thanksgiving where about 20 of our friends, 18 to 20 of our friends come up and they stay in all of the rooms, uh, sleeping on floors, on sofas, whatever the case, uh, no one's precious here. And we extend this table. My husband actually made this table. Um, and so it can fit about 20 or 22. There's usually someone kind of sitting in the hallway because it goes so long, uh, but it's such good fun. Um, but I, I absolutely love this room and I can't remember who said this, but they, uh, the saying was, you know, make sure that your dining room um, is really kind of it leaves a statement, it leaves an impression on someone because you don't, you're not in there for very long. And if that's so true, you'll probably spend, you know, several hours cooking and then have a meal and it lasts an hour, hour and a half or so. So make sure that it is memorable. Um, and so that's the reason why I've included some of my, my absolute favorite things. Uh, I keep saying that and I think everything in this house is my favorite thing. <laughs> But um, one being uh, this crystal, French crystal chandelier uh, of a ship. I have been pining for one of these for years. I think, um, I think it was actually Kirsten Dunst who said that uh, she had one in her one of her homes and I had never seen anything like it and I just fell in love with it. And one of the beauties of, again, having Relic is that I've had an amazing time meeting so many different other dealers um, who are traveling around the world as, as much as I am finding and sourcing different pieces. And one of the dealers named Mike, um, he came across this bad boy. And as soon as I saw it, I said, you have to sell that to me. Like, I don't care, just name your price. I have to have this thing. <laughs> Luckily he was a good, he's, he's a good friend and a fair dealer. So he didn't uh, completely rinse me for it. <laughs> but, but it's one of my favorite pieces. Um, it was, it can, it, it was a light. Um, it can be wired as a light. However, uh, you'll see there's not that much light in this room and that's intentional just because as, uh, however you want to view it, we like eating by candlelight. Um, and it's just, again, a bit of drama that you only use, or you only do when it's, uh, when your friends and family are over. So you might as well. It's normally just us sitting at the kitchen island uh, if it's just the three of us. So whenever there are friends around, we make the effort and eat by candlelight. So I'm going to change this into a candelabra. Um, and so whenever we have our next dinner party, it will be lit and ready. Um, another really nice thing about um, this room is again, my husband built the table and it was our table from London. He's now like really upset because he's like, we need to throw that away, but it has such sentimental value to me. It's just a wooden table, um, you know, all the pieces we get sourced from a local hardware store in London. So it's kind of mix a match of smaller bits of wood. Um, but on the table is the 17th century Verdu tapestry. Um, it's dated late 17th century, early 18th century Verdu tapestry. Um, and it's a Flemish tapestry that has uh, so much history to it. Verdu just basically means it's green. Uh, what you can see is that they normally have a lot of different botanical studies. Um, they have different motifs. This one in particular um, has a bird motif and again, foliage, which I think is really nice. It has this kind of, it's, it's worn in places, but it has this type of warmth to it um, that I think is really quite nice. And again, it goes back to my kind of love of textiles and the use of textiles in a room. Um, we don't eat on this, I, I promise. <laughs> so I don't want to have you know, other art dealers and antique dealers really upset because I'm eating on the tapestry. We don't, I promise we roll, we, we put it away um, uh, safely whenever we're actually eating and just pull out a normal tablecloth. But I think it's a bit of fun and a bit of drama to, to compliment the, the chandelier as well. And this room is just about drama, isn't it? Um, one of the less dramatic, but hopefully um, as lovely pieces is one of my sofas that I designed. So uh, for Relic Interiors, I not only buy and sell um, art and antiques and deal in art and antiques, but I also design um, furniture, indoor and outdoor furniture that's inspired by a lot of the antique collections, um, pieces I have in my collection. Um, and this is one of the two-seater sofas from um, the Chapel Vale collection. Um, I think what's really nice detailing, if I can brag a little bit, 
<laughs> is this beautifully made of French oak um, based off of a, a chair, a bobbin armchair at the turn of the century. Um, one of the few claims to fame that uh, America has in regards to uh, antiquities is uh, I, I want to claim the invention of bobbin. <laughs> so there's a little bit of debate about that. But the idea originally was that bobbin is just um, made up of little bits and pieces of, of wood from a factory. Um, and again, it wasn't considered highbrow at all. And in fact, it was a little bit considered a, a lower class thing. But as it became, as a lot of things do, um, it became in vogue and it made its way to Europe. And so you have French and English bobbin pieces of furniture. I love them because I think it's really kind of fun and whimsical. Um, and I wanted to design a collection based off of that. And um, we came out with Chaffle Bell earlier this year, and it's been fantastic in regards to the reception of it. And it's it's really nice to have something that you've designed in your home, you know, <laughs> in your home that you can enjoy. Um, and so, yeah, this is this is one of my favorite pieces. It also comes in a three seater sofa, which is very amazing. We have that in one of the upstairs rooms. But um, yeah, just a kind of a pride and joy moment here. Okay, so to continue on with the drama of the dining room, another uh, piece that I really enjoy uh, being in here are uh, two white peacocks. Now these are actually um, stage design sets or part of a stage design and they're done by um, the artists who worked at the old Victoria or the old Vic theater um, for the best part of about 40 or 50 years. Um, they're all hand painted, hand done, and I think, again, they're just so fun and a bit different. It's just a bit odd, uh, like a lot of the things in this room, um, but I think that it's really quite nice. They're, they're subtle in their palette, um, but they're quite striking um, as objects. And I, I love the kind of the whimsicalness of this juxtaposed the, the hyper-realist drawings um, by one of my absolute favorite contemporary artists. His name is Ramadan Hamas. Um, he is from Tanzania. I originally saw this portrait when my husband and I were at a friend's wedding in South Africa in Cape Town. And I, it was one of those moments where I saw it from across the room and I just beelined straight to it. And I just thought, that has to be a photograph, but I know it's a drawing. It's, and again, sure enough, it's these hyper-realist drawings, and this is actually a self-portrait. And since Ramadan has become a really dear friend of ours, um, you'll see a few of his works throughout the house. Um, really, it's important to me to have the black image um, throughout our home. Um, I, I collect a lot of different pieces of art, and I'm always drawn to figurative pieces. Um, so it's really nice to have the black image uh, juxtaposed to some of the continental European antique paintings that I have. I think it's a really kind of a nice and fun play on design. So I am obsessed with having a really nice tablescape. Um, and so I, wherever I go, I'm constantly collecting different plates and bits of china, um, just because I think it's really fun to have something interesting um, when you're at a dinner party. Um, some of my favorites are, this is um, based off of a, a Spanish librio, um, but it's a contemporary piece. So librios are um, these big, beautiful salt glaze um, bowls and plates um, that have these kind of traditional blue and green design, which I think are really fun. That combined with something really fun and contemporary like this Emma Bridgewater uh, piece of ceramic. And again, it, it's just, I think they're really nice and fun and colorful. Um, and then this one is probably one of my favorites as well. It's a, a Turkish design, um, hand painted in Turkey. I think I smuggled this in my carry-on when I was coming back. But yeah. So as far as my personal style and how we decorated the house, um, it's a little bit of everything. I joke to say with Relic, we go from classical to kitsch, and I think that's very much the style of this home. Um, we want it to be true to the, the, the bones of it, and it has so much original charm and history. Um, so we didn't want to go super modern because that's not really our, our taste per se, even though we like modern pieces and we kind of sprinkle them throughout. Um, we really want it to, to lean into that, that characterful, really kind of deep, uh, traditional style um, with pops of culture and pops of color, you know, throughout. Um, so each room, it, it's funny because when my husband and I, before we were married, uh, we talked about what would be our dream home. And he said, oh, 
in my dream home, every room would have a different theme and every room would have different color. And I remember thinking at the time, like, ooh, I don't know if that would feel very cohesive or look, <laughs> look very good. But I didn't, I didn't say that because I still wanted to impress him. So I was like, yeah, definitely agree with that. Um, but it's funny because now, as we've decorated each room, it has taken, each room has taken on a different style. Um, though I feel like there's a, there's a common thread throughout and I think that's the art that we bought together and then the art that I have for Relic. Um, I think that's really the commonality between it and you'll be able to see that as well. Even if they're different color schemes and different kind of ethos in each room, there's certainly a, a, a common denominator um, that I think is our style, which is classic, traditional with a bit of a twist. So we're now in the drawing room. Um, again, this is probably most akin to a, a formal living room um, or a formal sitting room. Uh, again, I, I think this was before, it would have probably been where the women would retire to speak after, uh, after dinner time. <laughs> um, but for us, it's really just a, a room to have a lot of the things that we've traveled and collected, uh, things that we uh, really adore. And we actually use this room a lot, especially after we put Bubba down to sleep. Um, it's nice to just have a little bit of an adult time of just relaxing and maybe having a glass of wine, having probably whiskey for my husband. Um, yeah, and just appreciating the things that we have. Uh, one of my, my favorite things in this room, in the focal point, is uh, the chandelier that we um, I actually bought when I was in Paris, um, wedding dress shopping with one of my best friends, Shannon. And the intention of going to Paris was just the wedding dress shop, but of course, I just want to pop into this one little shop uh, as we were walking to lunch. And this, again, this man had the most beautiful uh, shop. It was probably the size of this room, just completely rammed full of uh, different bits and pieces. And I saw this and I asked him, is it working? And he said, yeah, sure. <laughs> Again, thinking like, I'm just gonna trust them, sure. Um, and getting this back on the Eurostar to London, uh, I don't think I won too many points with my friend Shannon, because I think she was so embarrassed with me having this massive box. Uh, but I think it was really fun. And again, just every time I see it, I kind of think of the, the fun time that we had, um, and it was such a nice girl's trip. Um, a, another thing that I love just about living in a period property and, and having uh, such an amazing home to decorate is it has all these beautiful features that we had nothing to do with we just moved in um, and so but you get to, to decorate around them in in this room it's really this marble fireplace you could probably have this room completely empty and just have this fireplace and you'd be sorted <laughs> it's from a design perspective but of course uh, the magpie and hoarder that I am uh, I, I wanted to cover it with with all different bits and pieces but I just think that it has such a nice focal it adds such a nice focal point to a room um, it is a working fireplace as well um, and it's, it's one we don't actually use that often because when we want a fire, we go through to the snug um, with the bigger fireplace. But I just think that the detailing is beautiful and it's one of those things that really makes me um, feel privileged to, to live in a, a house with this history. Um, and certainly this would have been the reception room for the malt master whenever he had guests around. This would have been the room they probably spent the most time in as he was trying to impress them. This is a brass dog um, that's what they refer to as a Hollywood Regency. Um, so this would have been made in uh, the, the 40s or 50s. Um, it's, it's amazing. For a long time, I had it on the coffee table because why not? You know, you just want to be unapologetically yourself. And I think all rooms uh, should have a little bit of humor. And I think he's, he's really fun. Um, when I brought him in though, because I found him in London, from someone who was selling them. He he had had in his family for about 40, 50 years. It was his father's at the time. And he said, you know, we just, we need to make space so we don't need a massive dog <laughs> in our house. And so when I, I took him out of the boot of the car, my dogs start barking because I guess they obviously realize it's a, it's a dog type figure, but I think he's so fun, whimsical. It's one of those fun pieces on Relic that I use quite a lot in the still lifes that I put together because I think it's, again, unexpected uh, and, and very, and <laughs> a bit gaudy, but a fantastic way. <laughs> um, 
uh, something that's maybe a slightly more muted, but a, again, a bit more sculptural, is um, what they refer to as a Benin bronze. So um, this is probably it's hidden behind the door here. It's very heavy, so I'm gonna try to not break everything as I'm pulling him out. Um, this is, I, I, I often, if I ever come across them, acquire them. Um, this is a Benin bronze. It would have been a replica, probably mid-century replica of a 19th century original um, from the kingdom of Benin, um, which is now parts of Nigeria, effectively. And it's illegal to have the original one. So I, I want to reiterate that it's, <laughs> that it's a replica, a mid-century replica. Um, but I think they're just, they're so fantastic. You might have seen one in the dining room when we were in there. Um, I always have them because I think that they're nice sculptural pieces and they're quite tactile that it makes you want to, to pick them up. Um, and I think next to, say, a classical plaster bust, that co either color and texture and material juxtaposition really looks really nice um, in a room. And again, it's all about visual interest, but it's also about living with things that you love. So, and I love them. So he's here to stay. <laughs> um, and one of the things I, I mentioned before is the, the piece of Henry Frederick Lucas Lucas that I probably would never part with. And I caveat this to say, virtually everything in our house is for sale. <laughs> like, I, I joke when I say that, but I'm also kind of serious because we use our home as a, as a way to showcase the various pieces. But there are a few things that my husband and I will never part with. And this is one of them. Um, it's just a fantastic equestrian portrait by one of my favorite artists. Um, I, again, to be able to capture a horse in its likeness or anything in its likeness, this kind of hyper-realism, I really have an appreciation for. You probably saw that with the Ramadan Hamas uh, hyper-realistic portraits, but uh, it's, I think it's really, really quite an elegant piece. It's very small. The detail is next to none, um, and it requires you to really kind of go as close as you possibly can just to, just to see it. Um, it's titled Mermaid, um, and I got this at auction uh, probably about four or five years ago. Um, and it's, yeah, it's one of my favorite pieces. I move it around the house sometimes just, <laughs> just so I can always make sure that I see it. And we're spending a lot of time here in the drawing room uh, the past few months, so I've moved it into here. But it's been in our bedroom, it's been in the landing, it's been in the kitchen. You know, it's, yeah, it's one of my favorite pieces and it's definitely here to stay. This area in Suffolk had two different types of economies. One was um, brewing, um, so any, anything from like malt making, um, any type of brewers that are nearby, and also in textiles as well. Um, and this house was a malt master's house, so anyone that was in charge of, or the gentleman that was in charge of overseeing the, the organization of getting all of the malt in and um, processing it and then having it shipped out, he would live here, he resided here with his family, and then there's also servants' quarters and servants' stairways um, at the back of the house as well. But I think as soon as we walked in, when we saw it for the first time, and the estate agent mentioned that it had ties to Truman Brewery in London, uh, my husband, who's obsessed with craft, craft beer, said, okay, right, where do I sign? You know, he didn't, he didn't actually have to tour the property. He loved that history in itself. Um, and I'm very cognizant of when, even when I'm dealing in antiques, that I am simply a custodian. You know, a lot of the pieces I have in my home um, have been here long before me and they will be here long after me. And I just feel like I just have this privilege right now in this moment to enjoy it. Um, and then hopefully it passes on to a new owner or buyer or customer, whatever the case. And that's really the way I feel with CHAP is that we are simply the custodians and we want to do it it's the best service that we possibly could um, and add a little bit to that history. But, you know, it's been around for 350 years. I'm sure it'll be around for 350 more. So we're now making our way to the kitchen. Um, I think everyone says this, that the kitchen is the heart of the home and it's definitely rings true in this household as well. Um, I was gonna try to pretend like I made all of this, but I certainly did not, <laughs> certainly did not. Um, but we do love to have uh, carbs on the ready whenever you're uh, a little bit peckish. So um, in this room, again, this is the part of the back part of the house. So it's a lot smaller in scale. It has lower ceilings, 
you'll notice um, as opposed to say the drawing room or the foyer. Um, and it's not a big space at all, um, but it certainly fits the purpose that we have it. Um, we often have the majority of our meals here sat around and even if it's just with either our parents or our friends that come around, we always just loved having a big spread um, on the, the kitchen island, which is actually something I'm very proud of um, because we made this from an old carpenter's bench. So you might be able to see the old vice and it came from um, the workshop um, of a carpenter. And we loved it so much because again, that kind of antique and old, and this isn't antique, it's probably like early 20th century, but it, it just has a really beautiful kind of age patina to it. But to make it functional, we knew that we needed to have a white clean surface top <laughs> because all the little holes uh, in the scratch marks in the top of the carpenter's bench is not conducive for cooking. So um, we found an old restaurant that was a seafood restaurant um, and they were closing down and they had two massive stainless steel tables and we effectively cut the legs off of them. I built a subframe underneath the, the tabletop and um, so that we could then attach it to the carpenter's bench. But whenever I want to make it look fancy, I <laughs> put on uh, a nice a nice tablecloth and then just set out a spread. Um, but when it's us, it's usually just the stainless steel version and then we just wipe it clean, especially with a toddler and their little smudgy fingerprints everywhere. It's, it's a lot easier to deal with. On the table, we have a selection of pastries and homemade bread. I will say that I, my friend Liz joked that every time I talked about moving out of London into the countryside, I said, oh, I can make my, I can finally make, have enough space to make my own bread. I can make my own bread. So we have homemade bread here, though I didn't make this bread, though I can make similar types of bread. Um, and then we just have some pastries, which uh, my husband loves. He works from home, so uh, he loves it whenever I set it up like a patisserie or, or something. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really fun. And it, again, this is a, a very kind of cottagey kitchen. Uh, we spend a lot of time in here. You see the dogs are in here constantly. Um, we cook, my husband does the majority of the cooking. Um, so one of this kind of splurge items in the house uh, for doing a lot of the renovation ourselves, it meant that we can really kind of splurge on the items that we really wanted it was this um, eight eye Laconche uh, cooker range and it has a double oven and it cooks a 20 pound turkey in about two hours so it is a uh, well worth it <laughs> and when you have 20 hungry guests for thanksgiving <laughs> who want a turkey in two hours we got we have it sorted um but one of my favorite things in the house uh let alone the kitchen is this this tea towel and this is from um, this says London and it's just of one of the, one of the guards, but it's from my grandma. So we call her mama. And this was in her kitchen for years and years. So my mom's mom. And it's so funny that it's almost like she knew that one day I would move here or one day, one of us would move here, but it's just really nice to have around. Um, and as a reminder of my roots in Alabama and of my mama, cause she was a formidable woman and hopefully I can be half as amazing as she was so um but yeah we just we love to have some of our just incredible things here um but it's so it's so practical like even this tablecloth this is uh, amazing we got this in, in Rhodes um in Greece and but it, it and it looks super delicate but you can throw it in the wash washing machine and air, air dry it you know it's one of those things that we live in a house that is lived in <laughs> you know it might look curated now it does not normally look like this uh, we have like a, a love again my american roots having these um like american quilts these antique quilts and what these are normally is, is kind of nicely draped now but what this normally does is just cover this up because we have the dogs up here you know we have bubba up here with his crayons and things and you know we just we want to make our home feel warm and inviting and I would hate to have friends come around and they feel like they couldn't relax and that's one thing that we both love to do is relax and have friends around so now I wanted to show you guys our downstairs um, powder room um, someone once told me that it's probably the room that guests if they're only staying a short amount of time will leave the most impact so you should make it something memorable, memorable rather. Um, and so that's what we did here. And we refer to it as a little jewel box, but effectively I just 
wanted to make it feel like you're in a Turkish hammam. Uh, and that was kind of led by um, having this, this sink that you would normally have uh, at a hammam, uh, which is basically like a Turkish spa, effectively. So we, I was able to find um, a marble dealer um, in Turkey, and we told them what type of marble we were looking for, the dimensions, and they were able to, to hand carve it uh, to the dimensions that we required. Because again, this is a very small room, but we want it to have a lot of impact. Um, and then we found these um, tiles. Again, it, it feels quite modern in the fact that the, the way they're laid out, but it, it also feels uh, a bit rustic in the way they're done, that every one has a different finish and a different glazing on it. Um, and that's from Mandarin Stone. And Mandarin Stone was also able to give us that uh, Violet, Carrera, Violet Carrera marble. Whew, that's a mouthful. <laughs> um, so it was the deep veining um, of the marble, which I think is really nice. And again, a sh shower room. When we do have 10, 12 of our friends staying over, it's nice to just have an extra, an extra shower um, in the house so that you don't run out of hot water too quickly. Um, but that's it. Okay, so now we're gonna go upstairs to see some of the bedrooms and the nursery. I mentioned before that some of my favorite pieces of art um, really kind of include the black image. And sometimes it's very hard to find uh, pieces, antique paintings, oil paintings um, with the black image. Um, but this was absolutely one of my favorite paintings in the house. I think it takes pride of place. Um, it's an 1856 um, copy of a piece that was done in the 1820s, I believe, um, called The Young Courtesan. Um, or it's sometimes referred to as the allegory and infidelity. And you, you have the central female figure um, here that's looking out to the viewer as potentially the next, her next lover, um, where there's, and she's surrounded by three figures that are obviously all eyes on her and giving her different treats and treasures to win her heart, but she's obviously on to the next. Um, I just think that it's, it's really quite beautiful, the depiction of the black figure um, to her, on the right side of her um, or on her left as we as she looks at it um, but I just think that it's a, a fantastic piece um, and it, again it was originally painted by Alexandre Francois um, but yeah it's, it's one of those things that I love that image and then behind me you'll see another Ramadan Hamas's um, piece that I actually gave that to my husband for our first anniversary uh, because it was paper is the anniversary gift and um, I because I had become good friends with Ramadan I commissioned him to do this piece and it's called Shushu um, which means uh, grandmother or, or old old mother um, and I think it's just beautiful and so many people as they come up onto the landing they think that it's a photograph um, and then you get very close you can see that it's a drawing and I think it's just it's magnificent, honestly, and it's, it's such a delight to see every day. Um, now we'll make our way to a, one of the guest bedrooms called uh, the Map Room, and we titled it that or named it that because we wanted to, again, have a lot of the pieces that we source from around the world um, in one room, and it feels like an explorer's room as such. That was the original intention. Now it's just turned into... <laughs> It feels like a, a like your grandmother's sewing box because I keep when my husband's not looking I could keep putting more color and more frill in it everywhere. Um, but what I love in this room, um, very selfishly, <laughs> is uh, my three seater bobbin sofa. Um, so this is, again is from the Chapel Bell collection, and I think it's really nice. It's done in a, a dust rose velvet, and it's just super comfortable. One of my friends. Claire and um, her kids came up for a weekend and her little girl Lily just was in love with the sofa and we would catch her just asleep or curled up in the corner of it and it just I don't know just made my heart sing because that's exactly what we want you want well-made comfortable furniture built for a last lifetime <laughs> so um, but yeah we were able to just have a little bit of everything in this room. This is a, a, an original bobbin piece. Um, this is early 20th century. Um, and again, this is kind of the motif that was in, that inspired the, the new Chapel Bell collection. I mean, you'll probably find a billion examples of bobbin throughout my house. <laughs> I, we jokingly say it's an obsession, but it's, it's true. I, I think it is. Um, 
but this is, yeah, this is the map room. And this actually, this quilt, again, talking about textiles, um, I actually um, received that from a friend that I met on Instagram. So on Relic, um, which is where I sell the antique artwork and the bobbin furniture um, and also textiles, I've been able to meet a load of different amazing dealers, but even more amazing are friends on there, so customers, people who want to collaborate, people who also share this uh, love of interiors. And one of them, uh, a lovely, um, one of my lovely followers sent me this because I, I kept complaining I could not find enough quilts. <laughs> but now I have too many, so I feel like I should pay, repay her the favor. Um, but yeah, it, Relic has been wonderful for that. One of the, my favorite design tricks or maybe it's not even a trick just one of my favorite design techniques is layering rugs layering different colored rugs textured rugs style of rugs um i actually saw this originally um when i was um in south africa and we were staying at this beautiful airbnb and it was just a mismatch of 15 different rugs in their sitting room and we my husband and i both said like this is just so fun and it's so nice and so it was a, certainly a conscious effort when we had the time and space to finally uh, to layer the various different rugs. And again, it kind of goes back to what we were talking about, this kind of this idea of textiles and adding texture and color. Um, and it means that you don't have to be too serious about your interiors. You can just put together what you like. And if it's all coming from you, from your own aesthetic, it will all pull together. So this rug is one um, that I got when I was in Morocco with a, a good friend named Tia. And it was so funny because you should have seen us going through the airport with like 17 bags, each just full of Berber rugs, you know, um, and rugs from the Atlas Mountains. This is a contemporary rug here um, that's supposed to look antiqued and worn and things. And then this is an Afghan rug. Um, so, and this is a, again, just a wool Afghan rug. And I think all together, they're just so nice. Um, that next to the quilt, you know, next to the Suzani, <laughs> next to the French pelmet, you know, it's just all of it, all of it together, I think just really kind of pulls together to make a really beautiful piece. And that's what I love to offer on at Relic or through Relic Interiors. And in fact, I commissioned um, this Ikat uh, tablecloth, this round tablecloth um, to have made because I like the idea of just adding a splash of color in a, a guest bedroom um, that you can just kind of change very easily. But it's just it's just fun and it just kind of shows that it has a, like a nice texture to it. Um, but yes, I, I love layering. I think it's a really kind of fun and easy way to bring a new life to a room without changing your furniture, a massive financial outlay. So now we're in Hendrix's room or the nursery. Um, though I say it's a nursery, um, we were just saying that it actually is a room that he can really grow into. Um, it, the initial thought around this room is surrounded by the color of the wall. Uh, it's called a pate color, but I really wanted this kind of terracotta color to be the base, the foundation of the room, namely because I really wanted to use this color somewhere in the house. <laughs> so, and it didn't feel too feminine, didn't feel too masculine. Um, so it was a perfect palette uh, to, to then create this room around. Um, and the theme of it is really just started out as safari themed based off the paintings that are behind you. But um, what I really love in this room is uh, the, the collection of antique samplers here. So uh, what samplers used to be before there were phones and the computers and, and things, uh, little girls would practice their alphabets or practice their sewing skills on what they would refer to as samplers. And these are the sewn things. So they would normally just have the ABCs or maybe a Bible verse um, or, or something of that. But what I think is really quite charming about them is that they'll have the, the date in which they were, they're made, the name of the person who made it, and then the age. So this one is from 1882 at, at age nine, and her name was uh, Sarah Miles. Uh, it's, it's, things like that is quite sweet. And occasionally, which I think is really endearing, is that you will find a little bit of a spelling mistake, and it's because it's done by a child. Um, but I just think that was quite nice to have Hendrix grow up around something like that. Um, and then also he's practicing the ABCs, which, <laughs> which is never a bad thing. Um, 
my obsession with bobbing continues with the with the crib but i think the the kind of most exciting thing about this room and really the kind of the thing that spurred the design of it was this collection of 19th century um paintings of safari animals so uh i have an amazing dealer um his name is richard who deals in all types of art uh and he's absolutely fantastic he's the loveliest person in the world and he was able to find these from a, a, a private estate. And when I saw them, I fell in love with them. And he said, I don't want to split them up. I want to, I don't want to sell them individually. I want to sell them as a set. And when I saw them, this is years before I had Bubba, I just thought, oh my gosh, those would look, those would look perfect in a nursery. But I don't want to jinx it. So I, I, I bought them with the intention of selling them on, uh, but secretly hoping, I think I put them in a price point that it was too high that anyone would actually buy them. <laughs> so they wouldn't actually sell. So, and as soon as we found out that we were expecting Bubba, I immediately took them off from sell and, and knew that they were gonna have uh, the pride of place in, in his room. Um, so it's, it's funny because I'm sure we could simply Google what this animal is, but my husband and I just like to pretend, like make up different names for it. And, and Hendrix is starting to make up different names for it as well. Um, but yeah, I just think this is a, a, such a nice room. We want it to have a big couch because if you've been there with newborn days, you know, you won't be getting a lot of sleep. And so um, we've spent many a night's sleep in here while he's trying to trying to get some rest. But um, this is this is probably my favorite room because it's the room that my little boy went from a little baby to this rambunctious willful toddler so um yeah it really shared, it holds a special part place in my heart home to me means a place where you can genuinely be your authentic self i i don't care how cliche that sounds but i i often speak to people and they when we talk about decor or styling or what to do with their interiors and they say oh i've, I've seen this trend i really like that I, I see that trend i really like that and that's fantastic, but surely you want your home to be where a place that really kind of embodies everything that you believe in, everything you love and cherish. You know, you shouldn't follow some hashtag or some trend because it seems popular right now. Um, I, we always say we, we have the absolute luxury of being able to travel around the world, visiting family and friends and seeing new places and doing new things, but we always say as soon as we come home, there's there's just kind of this, this warmth that we really just can't wait to get back to. Um, and I think that if you can create that, you know, I think you really kind of won the lottery. Thanks for watching. For more homeworthy content, be sure to like and subscribe.